pressure is mounting on the continent as countries rush to meet their debt obligations and issue table before African leaders last week in Addis Ababa. The African Union is proposing what it calls a debt management plan. What, how effective do you reckon this proposal is going to be? I think it's still a rough draft. There's been conversations that have been had uh, concerning the same, but nothing much has come out of it in terms of uh, concrete steps um, in dealing with the, uh, you know, with, with the rising debt, and in particularly um, dealing with the distress that it is now showing up in uh, in most of these countries. Experts spin the African debt crisis, the economy's weak fiscal and external account balances. In a way, is it possible to? balance the budgets, because that has been the biggest problem with African governments, balancing their budgets. If they don't do so, then this problem will always be there. The COVID-19 pandemic, along with the conflict in Ukraine, is what triggered a sharp deterioration in the current account balances of some of the continent's major economies. You find that you have debt-debt relationship when you borrow short-term capital at high interest rates, and then you have to roll over you borrow more, <laughs> and it's just a, a vicious cycle. The recent interest hikes made by central banks from the U.S. Federal Reserve to European apex banks to contain inflation is another issue that has pushed African economies to distress. When you're dealing with the dollar, which is um, you know, the, the reserve currency in the world, it, it, it puts you in a very difficult situation, especially when you have... Um, a budget crisis or you have a debt problem, it tends to put you on, you know, uh, your back against the wall. According to the IMF, seven to eight African countries require debt restructuring. With Zambia, Ghana and Ethiopia already on the default list, the Washington-based lender said back in October at its annual meetings that it's closely watching Kenya, Angola, Malawi and Mozambique. And there's been some progress, but um, more is needed. The IMF has been increasingly pushing for reforms as part of its conditions for extending loans and assistance to African countries. And there was progress already in Marrakesh at the meetings in October. And uh, so let's hope that uh, this can be accelerated. You know, you have to remember that with the Paris Club, it really did take a long time to, to, for creditors to learn how to work together. Uh, but what we've seen so far is already faster than that. But some leaders on the continent have raised questions over the reforms, saying the reforms needed to resolve Africa's debt problem must extend beyond the continent and include global credit rating agencies. There's this been a growing feeling that um, um, there's been bias, you know, um, too quick to downgrade but too slow to upgrade. That has been kind of a chorus. According to the UN Conference on Trade and Development, African countries are paying eight times more in interest on loans than their European counterparts and four times more than the US on accounts of distorted assessments by global credit rating agencies. Najma Abdurizak, CGTN, Nairobi, Kenya.